morning to all of you. It's a pleasure to welcome you all to the first Dr. Agarwal's Grand Rounds. So everybody must be thinking, what is this really all about? Is this really going to be any different from the journal clubs which has been already happening? And uh, why should we be made to present? That is, I'm talking about the consultant. And is this really the age to start making PPTs and start presenting? So I just have one humble request. It's like, just put all your thoughts to rest and just think, whom is this really for? So at the end of today's talk, I want you to realize that it is for us that we are going to do this presentation. And by means of this, we are trying to educate ourselves and also the others with whatever knowledge we have. So and another thing is, we all know that a great talk always benefits with a great discussion. So I'm very happy to uh, uh, you know, uh, call our panelists for today. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, we have a pediatric topic. And as Pratibha mm -hmm. mentioned, we have three P's in our uh, panel, Dr. Pallavi from CMH, Dr. Pratibha from Velicheri and Dr. Preeta from Torur. Dr. Soundri ma'am, I think you can also uh, come and join us. Okay. Yeah, so uh, moving on, uh, I would like to introduce our uh, speaker for today, uh, Dr. Manjula ma'am, a very bubbly, enthusiastic, uh, you know, character. A ma'am who proves her mettle, not only, uh, you know, clinically with a profound knowledge, but also surgically. It's a pleasure to have you on board, ma'am, because it's, it's a, within a very short notice, ma'am just agreed to uh, go ahead with the talk. And uh, being the team leader, it, I think all the team leaders for the other teams would really get motivated by uh, ma'am's, you know, the participation enthusiasm. So, uh, welcome you ma'am for the talk. Uh, today's session will be moderated by Dr. Ashwin sir. Thank you. Thanks for the nice introduction that you have given me. Okay, today's topic of discussion, we put the lights on. Today's topic of discussion is amblyopia, the current concepts of management. Why is tackling amblyopia so important? If you look at the general population, the incidence of amblyopia is just 1 to 2 percent. But in the pediatric age group, every two out of the five children who walks into our OPD will suffer from amblyopia. So therefore, tackling amblyopia is one of the foremost things in the mind of a pediatric ophthalmologist as well as a general ophthalmologist. Now let's start off with a case presentation. This is a six-year-old female child. Child has been detected to have amblyopia in the left eye. The vision is 20 by 400. This is the uncorrected visual acuity. The patient has already been treated by a pediatric ophthalmologist. And this is the correction given. The right eye, a plus one sphere, and the left eye, a plus five with a minus 0.5 cylinder at axis 180. This child was uncooperative for patching and with this background or scenario, the child was referred to us. So the initial findings on examination, the visual acuity with correction in the right eye was 20 by 20, left 20 by 70. Patient was orthophoric for distance and near on cover test. Retinoscopy, there is plus one sphere in the right eye. The left eye, you see there is a little more cylinder, 1.5. This is a manifest retinoscopy at axis 15. So we changed the subjective uh, readings. So with one sphere, 20 by 20, with 5 and minus 1.25 cylinder at 15 axis, 20 by 60. The stereopsis is good, about 100 seconds of an arc. Work for dot, normal fusion. Cycloplegia shows a little more. This is latent with manifest hypermetropia. Dilated fundus examination, all structures normal. The fixation in the left eye central and steady. So all these things have to be seen in an amblyopic child. That is why I've depicted all the things that have to be scrutinized. It is just not visual acuity alone. So what is the diagnosis? It's a very straightforward diagnosis. No squint, refractive error, anisometropia, hyperopia. So this is a refractive amblyopia in the left eye. The child has been modified for the glasses. The right eye plus one sphere, the left plus 5.25 with a one cylinder at axis 15. You, you are going to emphasize on the continuum full-time wear of glasses. We are discussing contact lenses. Why are we discussing contact lenses? Because we don't want an isoconia to step in and deter the amblyopia treatment. The child is ours and the mother declines. So let's see the follow-up of this child. What we do is, since the child is averse to patching, we start them on atropin penalization. You instill one drop of one person atropin on Friday night, check for dilatation of pupil. If it isn't adequately dilated, instill one more dot. 
drop and you ask the child to come for an in-office examination on Monday, you look at the visual acuity in the right eye, the atrophin penalized eye, and you emphasize on own visual training activities like dot to dot and mazes. Let's look at the follow-up of this child. The first follow-up is at four-week interval. The visual acuity in the left eye has now improved from 2070 to 2050 parts. You plan to continue the beacon therapy of atropin. You plan to continue with the home visual training exercises. Second follow-up. This is going to be an eight-week follow-up. Good compliance with atropin. Visual acuity in the left eye is improved further to 2040 with one line more, with one letter more. Stereo acuity is showing a lot of improvement from 100 seconds to 80 seconds. Now you plan to continue atropin therapy, but you start on computer learning activities. That would be jump start exercises. Okay, this is follow up number three, which is at 12 weeks. So you're following up this child at every four week interval. Now the visual acuity is 20 by 30. Stereops has more improvement, 60 seconds of an hour. But you find that now the mother complains there is a decrease in the visual performance at school. The child is having difficulty at reading because of atropine penalization in her good eye. So now you have to suspend atropine penalization. You give quality time patching, that is two hours patching daily after school, which includes some activities like your Mickey Gun letter tracking. Let's go to progress evaluation number four, which is at 16 week. Vision has improved to 2025. Stereopsis is near normal at 60 seconds of an hour. You continue the quality time patching after school and weekends. Okay, 20 week follow up, this is progress evaluation at 5. Visual acuity is almost normal, 20 by 20. Ram dot is perfect, 40 seconds of an hour. The same thing is going to happen, but now you can taper. You are not supposed to discontinue your amblyopia therapy abruptly because you can have something like a recidivism happening. So you have to do a tapering of your uh, patching. At this point of time, when you have near stereopsis, good visual acuity in the other eye, so this is a final progress evaluation, 24 week follow-up, almost six months interval, visual acuity is 20 by 20, normal stereopsis, stable acuity, you emphasize on full-time wearing of glasses, you monitor this child at six months of intervals, you're not considered you're not concerned about recidivism because you're using full-time glasses but you continue to recommend contact lenses. At this point of time, if there are any doubts, I think. Anybody with questions regarding the case itself? No, because the child is averse to contact lenses. <coughs> the improvement will be faster if you are putting contact lenses. Once the patient has a uh, like, uh, 20 by 20, uh, we, are we not use the mic uh, just so uh, that everybody can. No, once the 20 by 20 is reached, as you saw, I saw on the previous few slides, you start tapering your back. You don't abruptly. If the child has been using two hours, you make it one hour, then you make it half an hour. It's all within eight weeks, I think. And then you can stop. Over eight weeks, you can take uh, Every visit, uh, uh, you've not recorded the right eye vision. Atropinization was happening. No, no, that is because I don't want it to be be recorded. As a protocol, so, visual acuity is done every time. No, that's what. That's so, why we stopped atropin when the child complained of uh, difficulty at school work. That's the reason why it was stopped. So, because occlusion amblyopia also should be. Yeah, yeah, reverse amblyopia. It's called as reverse amblyopia. You said that uh, the child was given glasses yeah. plus six and the same. Yeah, the anisophonia is there, but still you have improved. So, will the child I'm still use both eyes if there is so much of anisophonia? No, it, the child is using both eyes, but that's why you have a stereopsis. The child is not using both eyes, you won't have worse for dot function, you will not have stereopsis. So, uh, how do we know if the child is not having diplopia? The child is not having diplopia, the child will complain of diplopia. Okay. It's only an anisometropia of four. Diplopia ha happens with a larger anisometry. It's one and one eye. The other eye is plus five with a cylinder of 1.5. Once you stop the occlusion, does it uh, recur? The possibility of amblyopia? Possible, possibility of amblyopia? Yeah, the possibility of the recurrence is very high if you abruptly stop it. The moment the child achieves 20 by 20, you have to stop it, you say that's it, then you will have recidivism at But if you paper your patch up, it won't happen. But the key to all this is proper refraction. No amount of amblyopia therapy will happen if you give a wrong refraction.
that's the key. Yeah, Dr. Kala wants to know because uh, whether a surgical uh, clearance extraction will help because she feels Definitely that. Definitely not. Definitely not. Whatever you have, 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 whatever you and that's where the discussion really helps, you know. And until uh, what age would you try this full this thing? Uh, Amblyopia tra uh, uh, treatment. Till no, no, what age? Amblyopia treatment is over once the visual acuity reaches 20 by 20, and no. then you take by your eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Till what age yeah. would you? You keep doing it until entire childhood. Oh. No, what you what other thing? Uh, uh, so uh, uh, presenting uh, age, I mean, the presenting age of the child. Uh, Till what age would you go in for that? I will. It's there in the discussion. Okay. It's up to eight years. Eight years. But there is a period <laughs> where you can extend also. Okay. Shall we go on to the disc uh, the main presentation? Shall we go on to the main presentation? Any more questions? I mean, we have a minute to. Mm -hmm. A minute more. If anybody has any more questions, minute or two. No. Anything to clarify on the case? Yeah. I'm supposing this child is like myopic, severely high, highly myopic, at the age of six, six years, having uh, this anisometropic myopia, and instead of giving How much glasses, is anisometropia? I mean, you can say uh, myopia is around twelve spherical equivalent, and other eye six six. Two options are there: one is contact lens, the other is refractive sensitivity. Yeah, that is if what I mean. If you have anisometropia of more than six diopters <coughs> happening, and it's myopia, so you can always do your so the I mean advantage of that will be like uh, amblyopia treatment will be I mean amblyopia will be fastly corrected. In amblyopia, yeah, yeah, the amblyopia treatment would be more effective, or we would say it takes little lesser time for the improvement to take place once you have the anisoconia. Mm -hmm. The same thing is done with contact lenses. Suppose your patient is not affordable, or the patient's parents are not willing for a refractive surgery. Please push for contact lenses for any case of significant anisometropia. The improvement is faster and uh, the progression is better. Okay, shall we go on to the next presentation? Okay, now we'll go on to broadening the view of amblyopia. So, what is amblyopia? The simplest definition that amblyopia can have. Amblyopia is just a developmental disorder of spatial vision, which simply means an amblyopic child is not able to see something in space which you and me who are normal can perceive. So what is the classical uh, vision parameters? People say, is it best visual acuity less than 20 by 40? Is it a two line difference in visual acuity? Or is it even a best visual acuity of less than 20 by 20? Well, all three definitions will fit into amblyopia. Okay, now this is the visual pathway but what I would like to emphasize is all of us know there's the optic nerve, then you have the optic chiasm, the tract, the LGB, the radiations and the striate cortex. But this little small area over here, which is B5, this has been recently discovered by the National Eye Institute studies. And this has got a very useful role in the pathogenesis of amblyopia. This is just to show what are the cortical sensory adaptations that happen in amblyopia. A normal patient would have a large percentage of binocular cortical cells with also equal representation of monocular cortical <laughs> with also equal representation of the monoocular cortical cells but what happens if there is squinting in one particular eye if it's not a freely alternating squint what you have is the binocular cells keep coming down see how much it is reduced as well as there is some reduction in the monoocular cortical cells but if you have something like a meridional amblyopia or if you have something like high plus power equal kind of plus power in both your eyes then you find that your binocular cortical still cells still remain. It is just that only there is a decrease in the monocular cortical cells. Okay? Are not just functional changes in vision. Amblyopia is also associated with anatomical changes in the brain. Now this is the left eye where you find that the number of 
layering in your lateral geniculate body has come down as compared to the right dive. And also the striations in the striate cortex is far less in an amblyophic monkey as compared to a normal one. Okay? So I want to emphasize on the plasticity of periods of visual development. There's something called as a critical period which happens from birth to six months. This is when all your cell cellular connection, your binocular cortical cells, your monocular cortical cells keep improving. So in this critical period, if you have deprivation, if you have distortion of vision, you're going to have a dense amblyopia going to be manifest. There's something called sensitive period, which is six months to six years, eight years, and this is the period when we, you can modify your amblyopia, where treatment is sensitive. There is also a susceptible period between eight to 18 years, but what you have to remember is that there is a residual plasticity period which is going to start at 18 years and it is going to go up to mid adulthood. Okay? Amblyopia is not just decrease in vision. Beneath the surface, you have a lot of other functional abnormalities which you can expect. One is decrease in contrast sensitivity, spatial distortion, abnormal spatial interaction, crowding, Loss of accommodation or decreased accommodation, abnormal smooth pursuits and saccadic eye movements, suppression, interaction of spatial and temporal functions. So is treatment of amblyopia just based on observational data? It is necessary but definitely insufficient. You need far more kind of in-depth analysis of amblyopia. Okay, that is why the National Eye Institute came into being and it started the PEDIC trials or the Pediatric Eye Disease Investigator Group of Trials which is a multi-centric, randomized, controlled trials involving private practitioners and institutional practitioners. The first study came out in ophthalmology at 2003 and that was what is the patching regimen which you will follow for in treatment of severe amblyopia in children. This is the first study. So the results of this study said what people were following for severe amblyopia is full-time patching. So after the, this study was published in ophthalmology, they said that there is no longer full-time patching that is necessary. You can do away with six hours of patching in severe amblyopic children. This is the first study published by ophthalmology journal long ago in 2003 and it still holds good because we do not do full-time patching for severe amblyopia. When I mean severe amblyopia, I mean a visual activity of 6.30 and less. We only do about a maximum of 6 hours of patching. The second study was on moderate amblyopia and this was published in the American Journal of Ophthalmology in 2003, again in 2003 and this study showed the results with atropine penalization as against to be as against to patching. Now as far as the results of this study goes, you had improvement of visual activity almost equal in both groups. Whether you did patching or atropine penalization, both cohorts of patients had equal visual activity, but its improvement was faster with occlusion as compared to atropine. Now the next study was, is daily atropine needed? This study was the randomized trial of atropine regimen in ophthalmology in 2004. They compared daily atropine versus beacon atropine and the outcome of results after 17 weeks said that both children had similar outcomes. So there is no reason that you have to persist with daily atropine therapy, but you have to persist with beacon atropine therapy. Now, treatment of amblyopia in older children. We tend to treat children only up to the age of 8 years. Or that, that, that is the general mind concept that amblyopia therapy does not work in older age group. That is the reason this randomized trial published in the archives of ophthalmology in 2005, it took children between the age group of 7 to 17 years. This is the plasticity period. And they found out if children between 7 to 12 years, amblyopia therapy worked if amblyopia was not addressed, uh, was ad even if it was addressed previously. And between 13 and 17, amblyopia therapy worked only if amblyopia treatment had not been uh, addressed previously. So you got this point? So between 7 to 12, amblyopia therapy will work even if children had had amblyopia therapy in the past. But between 13 and 17, you will have better results only if the child had not been treated in the past. Okay?
So then the next study was anisometropic amblyopia in children with refractive correction. This is in 2006, published in ophthalmology journal. And you have children between 3 and 7, visual activity ranging from severe to moderate visual loss. And the only treatment that was given in this cohort of patients is just spectacle treatment. And at the end of 30 weeks, you found significant improvement with just glasses. So what is the conclusion of this study? Glasses alone is a powerful treatment modality in young children with anisometropia. And in moderate cases of amblyopia, it may be the only treatment that is necessary. Now, there is a phase two of this study, again in ophthalmology 2006. After the completion of first phase, you have two subsets of patients, one undergoing patching with near activities, the other which did not undergo patching and near activities. And you find that there was additional improvement in patients who had the patching group. Okay, so how do you manage patients with amblyopia? Appropriate glasses. This is very important. This is the first step, giving proper refraction. Quality time patching if it is moderate amblyopia. You have a belt and suspenders approach to atherton. What do you mean by belt and suspenders? Use atherton for some time. You find that the reverse amblyopia is happening, you have to stop atherton. And patching is moderate. Refractive amblyopes, you can give home-based visual training exercises. But in strabismic amblyopes, you need more vigilance because they are prone to regression. And that's where the fortified amblyopia therapy comes into being. Okay, these are the tips for successful management. It's called undoing the occlusion confusion. If there is severe amblyopia, you have to give direct maximal occlusion, moderate minimal occlusion, shallow, shallow amblyopia, no occlusion at all. Always <coughs> emphasize on the value of glasses and your point activities. What are the issues in compliance with patching? You find it very difficult to motivate children because it doesn't make a sense to a child why is the better eye patch. And children of all ages are concerned about their appearance and children are always adept at treating the system. What are the different methods of occlusion? You have occlude patches, plastic occluders, patches, which can be stuck to your glasses. Now we uh, look at amblyopia as a developmental disorder. It's a developmentally disabled eye. So you can teach this eye to perform better. And that is what is the concept of perceptual learning. So how can you train the eye, visually train the eye? You can use hiding a fresh stimulation to stimulate the macula. You can improve accommodation, like accommodative stimulation. You can use to improve the ocular motor precision control by using small detailed targets. Reduce the crowding phenomenon, which is present in amblyopia. Improve spatial localization. It is not, that is why all these near vision, the vision training is so very important. It is just not about only patching and forgetting about the child. Then you will not get any improvement. So what is, there is a concept of monocular fixation, binocular field. What is this? The amblyopic eye will be preferred to send, function centrally, whereas the other eye will function peripherally. This is like an analogy to picture-in-picture picture TV screen. Now, one of the things for MFDF is you can use foggers, foggers like the Bargretter foils, which can occlude the other eye, but it does not completely deprive the eye of vision or light. It will just drop the vision to below the amblyopic eye. Atropin penalization paralyzes accommodation as well as the dilatation of the pupil will induce aberration and also reduces the depth of focus at all distances. Again, here we are going to achieve a vision which is lower than the amblyopic eye. There is something called as supervised perceptual learning under MFDF. Now you use anaglyphic filters or polarized filters. You have red-green filters. The good eye is going to have the red filter. The bad eye is going to have the green filter. And your print is going to be in red. So what happens? The child is not going to see with the good eye. The, all the print is going to be appeared clear, uh, blanched. But the green filtered eye will see the red print and you ask the child to track the alphabets. So you can see in this paragraph the child has tracked the alphabets and the eye which is going to guide the normal eye is the amblyopic eye. So the preference is to the amblyopic eye. All these things are done under binocular conditions. So this is like a biofeedback and you have better improvement in amblyopia therapy. So 
So the last and the final thing which I would like to say, which is there in our hospital, is computerized therapy to amblyopia, which is the Ambinet exercises. You have a whole array of programs for the child to perform. And what is the this exercise so very different from the normal things which you do? And when the child starts doing this, the child is going to be adept at looking at one of the phenomenal changes which is happening in amblyopia, that is crowding. So the vision improvement, the quality of vision and the amblyopia therapy is going to be better. Find the target. So the, as the child keeps doing the exercises, the target keeps getting reduced in size. So the child is going to have ocular motor precision control when the child is going to find a target of reduced size. So windows of opportunity. This is the last phase of my talk. The windows of opportunity in treating amblyopia. Yes, amblyopia can be addressed. There is a sensitive period, 8 years. You are going to do patching, but you have other modalities of providing biofront feedback and perceptual learning. But age alone should not be used as a limiting factor for amblyopia. Okay, this is the final take-home message. And what about wonder drugs? There are so many things which are happening. There is levocadopa, carbidopa, which is being studied. Now the study is going on by ATS for levocarbi combinations. They all improve the axonal neuronal stimulation. But what you have to remember, they can be only used with adjunct to other forms of amblyopia therapy. Levocarbi is suggested only in children more than 8 years, but we have the other one, the city colon, which can be used at a younger age group. And amblyopia therapy is just like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. You fit in perfectly, you get a perfect picture. Thanks for your patience. Sure that there are a few questions. I have a few myself, but before me, I think it's important to get the crowd to start asking their questions. So, anybody has any questions regarding the talk or amblyopia? Do we have patches in our hospital? No, but it's available at bernal.com and you can use it. But it's not necessary because you know, because sometimes we give you the optic patch. Yeah, optic glue is there, but that's but you have something which is like a small thing. They want on the glasses also. After they remove it to apply coconut oil or some kind of moisturizer, that works better. Because in India, I see like some children come with a patch. They look down and they don't know what they do this and stuff. So that also actually works. And one more. Well, uh, this amblyopia eye net exercises, how long do you recommend? Is it for the same period as what you recommend yeah, for the occlusion therapy? How, you know, no, no. Atropine therapy, you have to look at occlusion. Like, no, yeah, 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 six months, four, four week follow up, and as soon as the vision is this thing, you can taper it and stop it. It's just like patching. Whatever you do for patching, the same applies. So, so that that's the ground the rules for patching. So, you give it uh, uh, as a home based that, thing no, and no, you no. assess after four weeks. You keep calling the patient at four weeks. Okay, thank you. Yeah. One is just for the interest of the postgraduates. Uh, if the amblyopia is associated with squint, then what would you treat first and why? Uh, actually, there are a lot of controversies regarding that, this, but what I actually do is I see that there is equal fixation. Suppose you have a child where the fixation is not equal, then you are at a roadblock. When there is equal fixation with both eyes, you can start off with your strabismus therapy and then go on continue with your amblyopia therapy. Especially in an institutional practice like ours, actually we don't have dropout of patients. So they keep coming for a follow-up. The reason why people said is you first treat amblyopia and then do strabismus because of the larger dropout rates happening peripherally. But in an institutional practice, it doesn't matter. Because there is a roadblock if the strabismus is still existing. So it's better to treat your strabismus once there is an equalization of fixation. Um, the second question is regarding patching. So, uh, like when we were taught, we were taught that the, the patching depends on the age. So, if it's a one year old child, it's no, one in seven. See, now two year old child, two in seven. So, how much? Yes, yeah, so how much? That is patching? for full time patching, which Correct. is not done any longer. So, now it's for severe amblyopia, it's only six hours. So, now what we follow is the pedic trials. You don't follow the age old ones. And uh, ma'am, uh, with regards to the treatment of amblyopia, you said that the older age group, they tend to not. Uh, respond better if they've had a previous amblyopia therapy. This so, what is the study? study? So, what is the study? What the study says You can still try. But, but what is the rationale behind it? No, they found out in the study. They had children between 7 to 12 years. There's another group between 13 to 17. Okay. And the conclusion of the study was this. So, it doesn't mean that you follow it. You can still treat your amblyopic patients up to 17 years 
but you just keep it at the back of your mind if a scientific study has told you that then you don't expect as good a results if the amblyopia has been addressed and last question ma'am what's the role of functional mri in amblyopia i don't know <laughs> i have not done it First of all, uh, congrats, I think, the whole uh, clinical team and Ashwin for this. I don't see it, this kind of crowd in any way. Along with that, I wanted to be a show here. She we she be we uh, started something called Abiropia. Okay. Have you gone through it? Yes, ma'am. You told me to go through it, ma'am. <laughs> I, I have done it. <laughs> How come you didn't go That's why I wanted it. I wanted to be a show here. We part. tried and proved that Abiropia is, uh, Amblopia is not true. It is Abiropia, it got accepted in American uh, journals also. And we tried to prove that this is due to higher order aberrations in older age groups. Ma'am, if, like if you have your refractive correction and then you find that the child is not improving, then you think of Amblopia. Look because at some of these children are left alone. We usually, we are taught from, right from the beginning that within five years, if you don't treat the Amblopia, that becomes a permanent amblyopia. We disproved that. We took so many cases and we did LASIK and we did clear lens extraction and we gave them three to four lines of uh, improved uh, visual acuity. So I just that's what I tell this. Can they leave now? I'm in my braces. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma Angela, ma'am, do you have any questions to ask for amblyopia before and now? First of all, an excellent presentation and uh, quite uh, refreshing for my old brain. <laughs> so, um, the only thing probably it is out of the um, syllabus of today's talk. Um, we also have this deprivation of myopia when there are some corneal uh, opacities, uh, birth trauma or some such thing. Kind of In that kind of case, uh, how would you manage uh, such a child? Ma'am, the thing is, suppose you've had a corneal opacity and you've done a penetrating keratoplasty. The biggest roadblock here would be your irregular astigmatism. So that, because we are not going to have a proper kind of a refraction possible. Maybe we have to give something like a rose scale lens or a mini scleral lens to uh, uh, counter that component. Then your amblyopia therapy would definitely, but definitely this will be a very dense kind of amblyopia direct maximal occlusion would be the way of going about it, longer term follow. Maybe the results, final results of your visual acuity will not be that very promising. But definitely there is scope for improvement. We have to try and look at it. Uh, Dr. Anusha has one more question. Anybody else has a question? I, have a question. I think we have two questions. Yeah, I'll come back to that. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Thank How do you calculate the number of hours of occlusion? You said two to six days. No, no. In severe amblyopia, you do six hours. Okay. If it's moderate amblyopia, you do only two hours. Okay. So if it's minimal amblyopia, you don't have to patch it off. Okay. So and um, some, some some children are just more accident to patching. So, so that is when like you other modalities have told you. African penalization is one such, okay. and you have this barometer for you, which will test. You have MFBF kind of exercise. So many other things. So our alternative modalities. Two hours is definitely not going to help. You have to emphasize on six hours, which is a severe thing. Ma'am, what is the period where you're going to You can keep on trying up to 18 years. Why should you give up on your patient? Like I started treatment today, uh -huh. so do I wait for 16 weeks, 6 months? No, actually as I said, 24 weeks. By 24 weeks you see. If you are not seeing, there is something going wrong in your treatment. Either the child is non-compliant or the refraction is totally not adequate. So you have to look at your, each time the child comes, you have to see, why is my child not improving? If a child is going to come with the same 6 by 18 for your entire 6 months, then your refraction is wrong. Most probably that so is six the months is the cutoff when you decide that yes, the treatment is No, wrong. every four weeks you are bound to see so some improvement. The, the last? Yeah. It again depends on where you started with. In my case, the patient has 6 by uh, 20 by 70, that means 6 by 19 vision. So if it's going to be 6 by 60 or less, it may take even a year. But you will see improvement. You will see a progression. At every follow-up, you will have to monitor for progression. And the six hours patching can be in parts or has no, to be? No, the six hours patching is better to be as a continuous. You do 
do or we do know the that questions can be asked to the other panelists also one more question okay uh, you know? just before you ask one yeah. question yes one uh, can you use atropine for severe amblyopia and if not why atropine for severe amblyopia may not give adequate results for severe amblyopia it's direct maximal occlusion it works better in more <coughs> What is the, uh, what is the, I need to know what exactly, uh, do you recommend atropine refraction first or cyclo refraction, what is the age, what, how do you determine this is the right refraction or is it Refraction is a different topic altogether, so it's not within the scope of today's talk, but uh, in children you need to do a cyclo pledge. Till what age and what means, I, I, I just want to know this because we are seeing a six year old child. Yeah, the hypermetropic children at all ages, up to 16 years, even adults, adults, you can do cycloplegia. Okay. Okay, hypermetropia, cycloplegia is the norm. Right. Now, children, that is basically up to 16. Pediatric population, cycloplegic is a must. Till adults, 16, all refraction, yeah, all refraction to be done with cycloplegia. Hypermetropia, even in adults, cycloplegic, yes. And any patient at any age group with accommodative problems. Okay, then they have accommodative asthma, <coughs> they have eye strain. Then you look at psychological function. Okay, thank In a four month old child, uh, a four month old child, if you like your cataract, you have okay. uh, done the surgery. Okay. Uh, after surgery, you want to continue with the patching for the other eye. Yeah. So, how do you follow up the patients and what are the things you look for when the patient is coming for follow up? See, four month old child, first you have to look at alternation of fixation. That is the thing. Because this child could ha should be able to uh, look at your target without resisting occlusion. That's a way of indicator. And uh, the second thing is if there is strabismus, there should be alternation of fixation. And uh, the same way, four weeks you have to keep following up the child and you know each time you look. Other things you can't basically, your dilated fundus examination should be normal, your refraction should be okay. And each time you look at the subtle monitors. Or you can just do some colored uh, objects and ask the child to take up. You look at indirect indicators of visual activity. Like this is also another topic because this will come to how do you assess children in a pre-verbal age. So that's what you basically. This debate will go on for another three minutes. So please keep your questions ready. I have one is more the, coming uh, up here. Is the four weeks time duration like it is forever? Or like if we feel improvement is there, we can increase the time duration or follow up? <coughs> it's up to you. But I think four weeks is more generally is the long term. The second thing, like in, in a patient who is metropic, in a child like say 5 or 6 years and we are starting and child is like wearing glasses for the first time, should we first start the glasses, let the uh, child adapt to it for like, like say 2 to 3 months and then Not go three for months. the myopic? You call the child at 4 weeks. Why 3 months? Don't delay the period yourself. Call them, call them at 4 weeks. We have one question here. Ma'am, you spoke about city colon. Mm -hmm. what is the minimum age to start city colon and how long do we give it for? City colon is a drug which you can give, it, give earlier. For as far as Leo and Carby is concerned, you give it only after 8 years. But city can be started earlier. Uh, for children who are going to be like uh, very small children, you can give 20-50 milligram per day. This will be maybe uh, age group of around 6 years. More than 6, you can even give up to 500. Body weight also. You can just can't see the calculation of the dose. So Body weight is so. Uh, so how long? You do it as an aspect <coughs> of patching. So however long you're doing your patching, however that much period of time you can put the patient on city colon. And ma'am, any difference in dose uh, in uh, moderate and severe amnesia? No, the dosage is the same. Because moderate severe is your patching regimen which is perfect. I have a question. Uh, in a child with either emetropic amnesia, the hypermetro, Best corrected vision in one eye is say uh, 660, other eye is uh, 636 after glasses. Mm -hmm. Is there a role for alternate uh, patching? Uh, no, there is no role for. So what do we do in those cases? See, these are anatropias cases. You just give the optimum refractive correction and you just keep following, following up the patient. Suppose the amblyopia is going to be very like uh, maybe 630, you can do alternate patching. But if it's going to be around 612 with your anatropic correction, you can just see. There's no need for any patching. I have a question. Suppose the child has been through one sitting of Ambinet, the six months therapy, mm -hmm. but after a few days you note a drop in vision, you know, and then do we repeat? Uh, can we give Actually, Ambinet? No. Uh, it's all about tapering the treatment. 
if you taper this recidivism never comes all so aggression has happens to be yeah everything has to be tapered okay so it, tapering means beyond 6 months or how long do you no, actually yeah, actually the abinet therapy which we have here is only for 3 months so okay. it has to work within 3 months okay <coughs> so i have one more question if the amplifier is dense as in one eye has 1 by 60 2 by 60 vision then how do you go for the occlusion because occlusion will hamper the baby after this child in cases of very child. dense amblyopia what you are talking about are eccentric fixation okay you look at your central fixation it will not be central it will be eccentric that is why the vision is 1 by 60 many times we have minus 16 diopters but yeah. it's not central fixation so what do you do with this children you need have need to stimulate the macula either the macula image tracking or the hiding the precious something you have to stop Um, I have one question for you, ma'am. Uh, could you tell us more about the pediatric smile, which is happening in your department? Is it helpful for treatment of amblyopia, or I mean, how do you decide, and what is the? Has it helpful? Yeah, yeah, definitely, this is what we have discussed uh, prior to, I mean, your question, Ms. Madam. Uh, refractive surgery or refractive laser, whatever it is, okay. Not only smile; it has worked wonders for the patients who are anisometropic. I mean, who are anisometropic, who are having anisometropic amblyopia. so there are very uh, few selective patients whom we have to select for the refractive surgery not all firstly the age of the patient because the patients are not compliant with the glasses they can i mean they cannot be treated for amblyopia with the glasses they are not compliant with the contact lens and they are having severe amblyopia and severe anisometropic amblyopia those patients are the patients we will select for the refractive laser and in refractive laser also uh, people say that it is always better to opt for procedures like photo refractive keratectomy or procedures where anterior stroma is least hampered and now the newest treatment is smile although it is not fda approved for the pediatric lasik but still i think it can uh, do wonders for those kind of patients for this smile when we when we offer a pr k the retreatment at say 18 or 20 when they have a regression or a residual power is easier In smile, generally, how do you augment? Is it like the other smile? You have to do a PRK or, or residual? Later. Suppose we do a smile at three or at six years of age or whatever. Okay. We definitely know that they are going to end up with an additional refractive error at around eighteen to twenty. How do you treat that if you have done smile? See, it depends for what power we have corrected. When the age, like for pediatric, what power we have corrected? It depends on that. What is the power? And secondly, what is the power the child or the person is having at the age of 18? What is the corneal shape? What is the residual thickness? It depends on that. I think majority patients that we select for pediatric glasses, they are having power of spherical equivalent more than 14 or something like that. That is what I have done. So, so in that range, definitely at the age of 18, uh, again, refractive laser is not an option. उंडी So all the questions were beautifully handled, and uh, I know with what Elan and attitude, I just can't. Thanks a lot. So big applause for them. Uh, 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 I raised a question: Is this going to be any different from the journal of the grand house? Is this any different? I think you got the answer. It is us, you, me, we who can make the difference. We want every one of you to participate. Bring about the questions. It can be the simplest of doubts, but I think it's better to make our mistakes and learn from this forum rather than do it on the patient. So thanks a lot for this overwhelming response and. Uh, Thank you. Nothing more to say. Thanks for coming here.